What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Crypto Blitz, your home for your crypto fix. I'm your host, Ripple Van Winkle. Hopefully, everyone had an amazing weekend. It's over. It's Monday, the worst day of the week. But what are you going to do? Look, another week here, another week about to come to an end. Before you know it, it's going to be September and it's going to be Q4 and this bull market is going to be heating up and spicing up. I can't wait for that. Yesterday, woke up super early, 5 a.m., head to the casino, got there around 6.15 or so. We had some free play we had to use before 7. It wasn't a good day at the casino, folks. It was not a good day. They, they spit us out. Multiple times, we went back home, about tails tucked between our legs. But what are you going to do? You can't win every time, and we know that. But it just, it sucks, you know? And then I caught up and sleep the rest of the day. That was my weekend. And here we are. I didn't want to wake up today, but here I am. I'm up. I wanted to sleep in, but got got to go to work. That is going to change very soon. Mark my words. We're going to take a look at Fiat League. We're going to look at the price of XRP because... It's actually doing something when everything else is in the red. I don't know what's going on out there. We're going to hear from Keith on XRP and the price action going on. And then the big news. The news that everyone probably heard at this, by this point, I would say. Ripple, 1,700 NDAs. It's all coming out in the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit documents. I told you on the live stream, there is a lot to go through and process in those documents. And it was so fresh, and it still is so fresh, that we are going to keep discovering new pieces of information as we go through it. I told you, once this lawsuit did come to an end, we would finally be able to see what is really going on behind the scenes at Ripple. And we would know, has it been BS this whole time, or is it real? And folks, it's freaking real. Let's jump into this thing. Bitcoin, $58,111. It's currently down 3.08% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum coming in at 2,576. It's down 2.82%. USDT is coming in as dollar peg. Is USDC is coming in at 99 cents. And XRP, well, it's up 2.18%. Coming in at a mean lean 58 cents. Total cryptocurrency market cap, $2 trillion, $75 billion. Where are we going to go from here? That's a great question. That's... That's the million dollar question. Look, we're still in the chop range. We aren't doing anything. We're just chopping. 54 to 63. It's just a massive chop. And Bitcoin's really hanging around this 58 to 59 thousand dollar region. The breakout is coming. Does it come when we get closer to elections? Or does it come this month? That's what we're waiting for. One of the two scenarios is going to play out. But what we do know is that this is a bull market. And we know that the price is going to go up. If you don't have your NFT, you need to go pick it up. The end of the month is coming. XRP payouts are going to be coming. The more you hold, the more XRP you get back. 800,000 XRP has been given back. Think about that. Think about any other NFT project on the XRP ledger. We've given back more XRP to our holders than these other projects. Probably 99% of projects on the XRP Ledger have taken in combined. And we have massive games about to drop. Our token about to drop. The Metaverse, halfway done. Three months left. That's about to drop. This ecosystem for Lux is about to boom. And by the way, the secondary prices, if you don't buy these from Lux, are a lot higher. I suggest you do some research and you jump into the largest NFT project on the XRP ledger. Fiat Link put this out. In the past 72 hours, XRP has shown some strong signs of a potential breakout. They put this out yesterday and they were right. We had a little bit of a push up, right? They said, driven by positive de developments in the ongoing SEC lawsuit against Ripple and an increased market momentum, the token has maintained a price around 57 cents to 65 cents with analysts suggesting that XRP could surge to new highs if it can break through these key resistant levels. Well, they're missing the biggest resistant level in there, which is 75 cents. But they're right. Look, this thing is due to pop. We know it likes to move by itself. It's independent of others. We know it likes to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. And no one's going to manipulate what it does. For some strange reasons, the only coin in green today huh, is something cooking. Crypto Michael said, the stage is set. It's time. We ride at dawn. 
I don't know what that means. It sounded good, so I wanted to show it to you when the price of XRP is up. You know, we're going to ride it down, we're going to ride it down. But I want to get into Keith, the one and only TA analyst that you need to be paying attention to because Keith tells you about each and every single move like months in advance before it's going to happen so you can avoid all the hopium out there. Listen to his analysis here on XRP. 82 Fib, which is still playing hardball at 60 cents. Warned you this is going to happen. How many times do we have to come on here and say it before people start to listen? There is some good news, though. All right. We're over all the moving averages like I told you I wanted Bitcoin to be. You see that? Over top of all the moving averages is bueno. It's bueno. Problem. It might sit here for a little bit and think about it. Like I was telling you, Bitcoin, I want to see it do this. When it gets in this position, sometimes it gets stuck and has to think about it. Consolidate. You'll see the Bollinger Bands get tight, which are here. And they're very much not tight. These are too wide. They need to scrunch in more. And then once they scrunch in more, you'll get that volatility and you'll get that pop that you're looking for, which, by the way, should move us up to the next level, which is another fib line, another mathematical support and resistance line. And since we're under, it'll be resistance, which is 75 cents. And I have this already drawn out for you here via arrows. All right. It's crazy that I was able to find this months and months and months in advance. It's almost as if the chart told us this was going to happen. And I didn't need a warrior princess or a Riddler to tell me it was going to happen. All right. I know people hate me for this. And I know it makes people mad and angry. And you want to get pushed back because you think I just can't be right about this. It's not even about me being right. It's about the chart being right. All I'm doing is reporting it to you. Right, so we're continuing this consolidation BS thinking about it here. It's probably going to go sideways a little more, like I said, until the Bollinger Bands tighten up. I'm okay with that, and it may shoot another shot up here towards 65. Again, 60 to 65, trying to test this trend line once more. It hasn't broken yet, but once it does break, I expect that run up here to about 75 cents or so. Then we should get a fade back. When we get that fade back, that's when we really get a pop, okay? We need to come back and back test this trend line. And I know that sucks, but it's probably going to happen. The box mark go time is the important time. Again, this is not the first time this has happened in history. We'll continue to talk about this until it happens because we know it's going to happen. Same thing happened at the exact same time in the chart on XRP in 2020. You popped over the trend line, you consolidated back, you hit go time, which was in between last chance and halfway done. Hey, everybody, look, we're in between not quite to last chance and halfway done. You see that? We're not quite there yet. We're actually back in this zone from the bottom to last chance. From the bottom to last chance, you see? We're in this up move right here. It hasn't happened yet, but it will. We can go back to 2016 because, all oh, this is the one everybody loves to talk about. Same thing. We're in between bottom and last chance. We haven't had this trend break yet, but we're going to get it. We'll get this bit of consolidation. Once we get this consolidation back to go time, it'll be takeoff time. And by takeoff time, I don't mean moon soon. I mean finally making some upper levels that we haven't made in a really long time. First level to attack will again be 75 cents, followed by a dollar, a dollar 30, a dollar 50, a dollar 75, then roughly two bucks. It ain't just going to go shooting up to the price you think it will. Those will be very difficult numbers to break. It will break them in time or at least test them. Not yet. Again. There you go. Look, there's the playbook. It's that simple. I told you, crypto is a very easy thing. You sell green, you buy red, you sit back, you wait for the price to go up. That's all we got to do here. Are we revisiting? Are we making another crack like Keith said around that 60 to 65 cent region? We could be. We could be, folks, right? We're still we're a little around the past hour, but it's not time. The bullet of bands are not tight enough. It's not time. Our time is coming. I've been telling you this since the beginning of the year. A lot of you thought I was crazy. I get that a lot. Don't you worry. But then we come to find this out. Ripple has over 1,700, folks, 1,700 NDAs between major banks, financial institutions, and companies. This is is in the Rippleverse SCC lawsuit. It states in here, in discovery, the parties produced over 1,700 contracts, which are specific agreements by which Riffle transferred XRP to contractual counterparties in a variety of commercial transactions. 
In his expert report, Schwartz organizes the 1,700 XRP contracts into four primary categories. Contracts by which Ripple transferred XRP directly to a counterparty. Contracts by which Ripple counterparties agreed to sell XRP on behalf of Ripple over trading platforms. Contracts by which Ripple paid for various counterparty services and XRP provided by Ripple. And in miscellaneous contracts that do not fall into the first of the three categories. Hello folks, 1700 contracts. Everything we thought that was going on, we clearly have been raid upon. We know of 500 partnerships. That is what has been made public, released to us. At least that was the number. It's probably higher by now. There's 1,700 under NDA, putting the total over 2,300. And each and every single one of those companies will use XRP. They're not just getting on so they can use their digital blockchain or RippleNet and have nothing to do with XRP, folks. They will all somehow, some way, whether they directly touch XRP or indirectly, it's being used as a gas token on the XRP ledger, they will all use XRP. RP. I'm going to leave it like that. Look, wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind of whichever. Ripple Van Winkle is out.